All right, here we go. Bi Coastal episode four. Um, taping this from my LA apartment without Tim for this, but we're just going to be running through um, talking about what we saw today from the NFL as well as uh, the NBA action. So we'll start off with some basketball. Um, Miami Heat tonight went on to the NBA finals. They're doing it. And um, yeah, they'll be playing Miami. They'll be playing the Lakers, actually. Um, should be quite a sight to see. I think a lot of people were surprised with Miami, especially with how they came out of the gates, how they so easily handled Indiana, um, took them down in four, even though Jimmy Buckets had that huge dispute with TJ Warren where he called him trash early on in the league, early on in the season. Um, so we didn't really know what to expect with that. TJ Warren was lighting it up in the bubble early on. He was having some like 40, 50 point games. Um, but then once the Pacers got to Miami, Jimmy Buckets was locking down and uh, the heat looked good there. And then of course we know they came, took care of the Bucks. Giannis was injured in that last game, but even still they were able to handle them. Um, and they just looked so dominant throughout. And so I don't think it's like a huge surprise to everyone now after watching that Bucks series, just how good the, this Miami heat team is. Um, but they just work so well as a unit. And I liken them almost to the Loyola Chicago team that went to the final four in believe it was 2016 um, with sister Jean as the mascot cheering them on. And they just work so well. Like they don't have one guy who's the pristine all-star or like one person who's going to give them 30 points a night, but they, they share the wealth. They have people who might be hot one night, you know, Jimmy, Jimmy buckets might be doing something one night and then Tyler hero erupts for 37 in another night. So I really like this Miami team. Congrats to them for making it to the NBA finals I know that Spolstra is stoked to be back there. They're going to be facing off against LeBron, um, and that should be <clears throat> that should be very eventful for them. Um, wish them best of luck there. But to the opposite side of that, the L.A. Lakers, they took care of the Nuggets in five. Um, didn't really know what to expect from this one. I think seeing as the Nuggets had come back from three to one, so many times in the previous the last two series uh, against the Jazz they were relentless Murray and Mitchell were going back and forth and then um, in the last series against the Clippers they they surprised everybody um, coming back winning seven we saw all the memes of pandemic P not being able to hit shots and Jamal Murray and Jokic, those two were incredible in that series. Jokic, especially uh, game seven, where I believe he had like a 20 rebound triple double and they went on to win. So I thought it would be a tougher task for, for LA, for the Lakers to face them. I thought, you know, if the Clippers couldn't handle them, then the Lakers might not be able to either. Cause I genuinely thought that the, Clippers were the better team of the two LA teams. I believe a lot of people thought that. Um, and so to see how they, how well they played, they were down at times. They let the nuggets get back into games at certain moments. Um, but between like the Anthony Davis three pointer, the game winner in game two, um, as well as just like LeBron taking over in, in game five, I know that they, they have a lot of weaker links like uh, Caruso is a great – he's a great player. Like, he assists them a lot on defense, and he's just a scrappy dude who makes things happen. He's a great teammate to have, um, but he cannot hit a fucking shot to save his life. And it's the same thing with KCP. I don't have a ton of faith in him, but at times he's looked like the third option for the Lakers. Like, in crunch time, he's like the third guy that they're looking to to hit shots. Um, which I believe they thought Kuzma would be the case there because at the start of the year, Kuzma was, you know, promoting and pumping his social media, talking about how 
he was the third option. It's as easy as one, two, three. You got AD, LeBron, and then Kuz. But clearly, he is, he's not the person they, they want. He, uh, he definitely struggled defensively on MPJ this series. Um, and so, yeah, we'll, we'll see what happens with them. I, I do think that the Lakers win this NBA Finals in six. Um, they're just – they've got the two best players on the court. And I know that the Heat, they'll try and put Bam on AD and slow him down. Um, but I don't know. I think Anthony Davis just has two – his game is way too polished. Like, he can hit three-pointers consistently. He can hit deep jump shots. And then he also has incredible post moves. So um, I don't think there's any slowing down LeBron or AD. But it's up to these other guys to just see see what they're capable of doing. Um, because, I don't know, it's it's hard to have faith in people who don't have that finals experience. They have Danny Green, who has been pretty awful in these playoffs, just as far as, like, hitting open shots. Uh, I feel like he's trending on Twitter every single game for just not being able to do his one job of shooting. But he at least does have that finals experience winning last year with Toronto and then also winning with San Antonio. So it should be interesting to see, see what he's able to do, see if he can actually uh, – the Lakers can benefit from some of his experience. But then – from on the flip side there, the Heat, I mean, they're completely new to it. You've got someone like Duncan Robinson who uh, probably just happy to be there. I mean, the dude was like undrafted, didn't even think he'd be playing pro basketball. And here he is going to be starting in the finals. You have Tyler Hero, who's 20 years old, which the media has beat that to death. They want to talk about his age like he's Jason Tatum or something with the he's only 20 meme. Um, but the Heat, I mean, they're a young team. They've got, like, Jay Crowder. I don't believe he has any finals experience. Jimmy Butler doesn't. So it should be interesting. I'm still going with the Lakers in six uh, for that NBA finals matchup. And it should be interesting to see what the sports media has to say about this. I feel like a lot of people are – they're now going to discredit the ring since it's LeBron, um, and they're going to say that he – Either the ring doesn't count at all, or if he does lose these finals, it's a full hit to his legacy. So if they, if LeBron loses, he's now three and seven in the finals, and him having ten appearances is just pathetic because he's only got three rings. But if they win, then we're not going to give him credit at all, and it's uh, it's not another ring for him. So as the sports media, we haven't decided yet, but I'm leaning towards we probably won't be giving him his credit. Um, so with that, I'll switch gears. Let's, uh, let's get into the NFL because as you all know, it was Sunday today and we had, we had quite the full slate of everything going on. Uh, I'm going to start with the Bengals versus the Eagles because I'm sure Philly fans listening to this, they're, uh, they're probably not too happy with their team right now, seeing as Carson Wentz is really he's shit the bed this season. He's got the most picks of any quarterback in the NFL with six. And I saw someone tweet this out today on Twitter that Carson Wentz has 39 picks and 58 fumbles in his 58 games played. Like that ginger dude is a fucking walking turnover. 39 interceptions, 58 fumbles in 58 games played. I mean, that's, you can't have that as a QB and I'm sure he, I mean, he doesn't have like the best offensive line, but, but he's got the necessary weapons to get it done. And so it should be interesting to see if, if Peterson goes with Jalen hurts at some point this year, I saw that Jalen hurts got a snap in today, but that was just a run play. And I do think that at a certain point you have to give someone else the shot. Like I realize you paid Wentz all this money I believe he's due $130 million within the next four years, which is just fucking ridiculous, like just crazy overpaid. But at the same time, like sometimes it's a sunk cost and you just have to drop it and go after the next best thing, which 
which might be Jalen Hurts for them. I mean, at least give him a shot to throw and, and hope that he doesn't fumble as much. Um, so as far as the Eagles, I mean, I know it's, it's pretty pathetic for them to tie with the Bengals because Cincinnati, they're the laughing stock. But I want to talk about them real quick because they have a star in Joe Burrow. I mean, what we saw from, from Joey B today was, a, it was an impressive game for him. He had two TDs, over 30 completions. Uh, he led them back at times. He took a huge hit in the second quarter that did not think he'd be able to get up from it. If Tom Brady got hit like that, people would be getting arrested. TB12 would be sitting out for probably another two weeks, just uh, eating guacamole ice cream or avocado ice cream. So credit to Burrow for popping back up. And really, he only sat out for one play. And then... As far as Cincinnati, I mean, they just don't have the weapons. Like Zach Taylor, I don't know what he's doing with the play calling, but um, they, they've they got A.J. Green. They've got Joe Burrow making the throws. They have a couple weapons, but just no offensive line. I believe Joe Burrow was sacked eight times today, um, and that just, that just can't be happening to, to get sacked eight times. And I I wouldn't really place the blame on him either just because he's getting rushed so quickly. And he's he's an elusive QB. We saw at LSU how he's able to get out of the pocket and and do his thing from time to time. But uh, the NFL, it's a different game, and it's a lot harder to avoid the sack. Um, It's like a Harvey Weinstein patient. You can't really avoid the sack. So there's that for the uh, Bengals versus Eagles. Tie game, 23-23. to I believe that was an ode to uh, MJ versus LeBron with the 23-23 because it's uh, Ohio. But anyways, we will move on to Browns versus the Redskins. And I don't know how to feel about Cleveland Browns. I mean, after they got destroyed by the Ravens week one, everyone was like, well, they played a good team. But here's the thing here is like, if you have your team, if you have set guys like OBJ, Jarvis Landry, you've got your franchise QB in Baker Mayfield, like you should be competing with these teams like the Ravens. Like you should be in the mix. You shouldn't be getting blown out. And so the Browns week two, we saw them beat Joe Burrow in Cincinnati, which once again, that's like a gimme win. That's, that's easy to get. Um, but this was another cakewalk for them. Chase Young was out of the game in the first quarter. The Washington football team, which I called them the Redskins earlier, but we'll call them the football team. Um, You know, they, they can't take care of business and Baker, he made some good throws credit to him. Their running game was open. Nick Chubb was able to run all over the defense, but I think for the, the football team, the Washington football team, uh, Haskins was the issue for them. I, he saw, I saw that he had three picks and I don't know if he's the answer for them in Washington. Like, I really don't know if he is the it factor to be the QB there. I saw last year after they, they got their first win of the season or after Haskins got his first win, he was taking selfies with fans before the game was even over. And it's just stuff like that where you you have a QB who doesn't have a winning attitude um it's hard to really have faith or stock in that person long term so we'll see what happens i mean i have a lot of faith in in Chase Young i think he'll be great but as far as the Washington football team they're in a lot of trouble they're i mean they're just stuck being mediocre and as far as the browns go i mean i'm i'm still not impressed with baker mayfield i think like The Browns classically beat up on bad teams, but they can't take care of good teams. So um, I don't know. It should be interesting to see what they do. I know that Baker has all these Hulu live sports commercials. He's got the progressive commercials. Um, Who knows? I mean, next year he might just be getting commercials, but not be getting airtime on the field. Who knows? Maybe uh, Stefanski just pulls the plug on him, but We'll see Browns, Red, Browns, Washington football team. That's a, that's kind of a dud game. So we will move along to real quick. I had a note about the 
the Niners versus the Giants. Um, and I'm not going to get into this game too much because the, the New York Giants are another complete joke team. Daniel Jones, Mr. Turnover himself. And then they also had Saquon Hurt last week. So they're not in a good spot. But my question was, is Nick Mullins the guy? Like, is he who you want as your starting quarterback with Jimmy GQ out? And I call him Jimmy GQ because he, he is a fashion model. I mean, he is a really sexy man. Um, but that's really all he is. He's not really an NFL quarterback. He kind of pulled the Peyton Manning on the Broncos thing last year where he got carried to the Super Bowl with their great defense and their, their good running game for the Niners. Uh, Jimmy G in that NFC game handed the ball off, or he threw the ball, I should say. He threw the ball eight times the whole game. So he didn't really have to do jack shit. He's like the guy who shows up hung over to the group project and gets the A. But the Niners, Nick Mullins today, he had great numbers. Niners get the win 36-9 to nine over the Giants. I don't know. I think Shanahan has um, – he has some decisions to make there. Maybe he should replace someone. Who knows? And if you're wondering what, uh, what cup I've got here for everyone listening, it's the uh, University of Oregon Business Honors Cup. I was a member of the program, uh, but they, accept, they accepted everyone, so nothing impressive. Okay, so we covered the Niners and the Giants. Niners, I don't think they're getting back to the Super Bowl. I don't think they have what it takes. Kittle's out. Jimmy G's out. Um, they've lost a little bit of their pop. But one game we'll touch on real quick is this Patriots-Raiders competition. And the Patriots look damn good. I mean, I know Barstool Sports, Dave Portnoy, he was talking about how the Pats-Seahawks game last week, that might be a Super Bowl matchup. Um, I don't know if I'd go that far, but I do think that Belichick just knows how to win. Like, he knows how to pivot. They lost Tom Brady, so they're moving away from the short five-yard passes, and they've got Cam running the ball from time to time. And whether it works or not, they have faith that Cam's going to do a QB power run from time to time. So uh, good to see that they've figured it out. Sony Michelle had a big running game. He played well. And – it was just too easy for them. The, uh, I think the Patriots are in, in a good spot in the AFC East. It'll be them or the Bills who come out. And I'll, I'll touch on that Bills game in a sec because I know that was a fucking wild ending. But the Raiders, one thing real quick for the Raiders is that I know Derek Carr, he's had his bright spots. You know, he was on hard knocks with Gruden and, and he looked pretty sexy there. He's a hot guy. But – the man can't make throws all the time. And he's, he's getting roasted on Twitter for his decision-making. Believe me, I get it. Like, the dude deserves to get roasted. He had so much potential when he was first starting out. But the Raiders have just uh, – they've stayed mediocre. And even since Gruden getting signed, Derek Carr really hasn't been able to prove much. Um, Hunter Renfro was one highlight for, for – Vegas, I should say. I almost called them the Oakland Raiders, but they uh they moved out of the bay and they're they're in Gamble Town in Vegas, baby. And Renfro, I think he's the ideal receiver for Belichick, actually. I'm sure he was taking notes after that T D he had in the second quarter. Hunter Renfro, just a low key guy, not touted by any of these teams, just like a white receiver who does the dirty work. Um, I don't know. That's that's Belichick's next uh, Welker or Amendola so who knows maybe they'll they'll try and steal him at some point I think uh, Gruden he gave away he gave away Khalil Mack so he might give away Renfro at some point and so with that game I think the Patriots they're um, they're looking good I predicted them to win the Super Bowl last year and then they fucking lost the Titans, who, which the Titans ended up being okay in that playoff run. But um, I think the Patriots are always in the mix. They'll always be in the mix. They'll always be a good team. So um, it's a pretty safe bet, and it's not very bold of me to say that they'll be back and they'll, they'll make a push in the AFC East and, and they'll be back in the playoffs. 
The Raiders, I don't fucking know. I think that Mariota needs to get some playing time. Um, I still think he was better than Tannehill. Tannehill just handed the ball off and was a little bit prettier, a little bit cuter of a guy. Um, but I do think that Mariota deserves his shot again, and he should be playing. Okay, so that, that does it for Patriots versus the Raiders, the Las Vegas Raiders. So the next one that I had written down was the Cowboys and Seahawks. Now, I didn't actually watch this game. I just saw the final score. But Cowboys, they had a big comeback last week against the Falcons, which choke city Falcons. Um, Dak was launching the ball today. He had 57 pass attempts. I made the joke about Joe Burrow needing Tommy John surgery after last week's loss to the Browns because he tossed the ball 61 times. But, I mean, Dak was doing it again tonight, 57 throws. They're just letting him heave it, and uh, they don't care if he tears his fucking arm off or not. It doesn't matter. They're just uh, they're trying to win now. So he's heaving it. Uh, he'll probably need surgery or something, but uh, he was – Mississippi State boy, so he'll be fine. Um, the Seahawks, they got it done. I didn't see what happened. I assume DK Metcalf. I assume Russell Wilson did their thing, um, and they just kept it moving. The Seahawks look like a damn good threat. Russell Wilson, his, uh, his throwing range is unlimited, as he would say, as the kids would say. Um, and although, you know, he's a corny guy, he's in TikToks with his wife, he says weird shit all the time. He's a man of God, but he still swears. He's got some flaws, but the Seahawks, they're looking good, and I'll, I'll credit them there. Honors. Okay, and then last thing I'll touch on for the NFL is the Chicago Bears and the Falcons. So Dan Quinn – I think he coached his last game today. I mean, he'll be lucky if the Falcons want him back as a towel boy or a water boy after this. I really don't see it happening for him. You blow two double-digit leads in the fourth quarter two weeks in a row. Like, are you fucking kidding me, man? And I know that Matt Ryan threw that pick at the end. I know that their defense couldn't stop. Big Dick Nick, Big Schlong Nick, Big Dick, Big Testies Nick. But – you got to do better. You got to manage the clock better. And we never really learned from that 28 to three loss against the Patriots in the Super Bowl. The Falcons have just been one big walking L and I know Julio didn't play today, but that doesn't even matter because the Falcons have a beast in Calvin Ridley. That 68 yard, 68 yard catch he had um, earlier today. I tweeted that out saying Calvin Ridley was the best receiver in the NFL I still stand by it. I think he is the best. But, but, Matt Ryan is not the truth. Matty Ice, I know that the Falcons have fucking had him for years. How many years has Matt Ryan played for the Falcons? It's got to be close to a decade. But this is fucking unacceptable. It's unacceptable from him. It's unacceptable from Dan Quinn. They're fucking melting down over here, acting like, Josh Allen in the playoffs last year against the Texans. It's terrible. But Nick Foles, on a day where the Eagles struggled and, Car and uh, Carson Wentz couldn't find the end zone, besides that one little scamper he had that was cute, a, a day where the Eagles had a tie with the worst team in football, Nick Foles is here for the Bears, and he's slinging it, and he's leading the comeback, and he's proving that the Eagles – should have stuck with him, in my opinion. I think in everyone's opinion. So there's that. The Bears are 3-0. and Mitch Trubisky, we might have seen the last of him, but who knows? We'll see what they decide to do moving forward. One thing I did want to touch on real quick, I don't have this written down, but the Bills played the Rams. Everyone was picking the Bills there. People thought that the Rams – uh, have kind of run their course. They had the Super Bowl run two years ago. They were shitty last year. People don't have a lot of faith in uh, – what's their fucking quarterback's name? Um, Jared Goff. Why couldn't I not – I could not think of his name. 
Um, people don't have a lot of faith in him. They think he's just a lazy Cali boy who likes to smoke bowls and go surfing. And I might agree with that take. Maybe he does smoke a little bit of hash, but he can make plays. He can make throws. He can toss downfield. And the Rams gave him a run for their money. The bills were up big. I saw PFT from Barstool was tweeting out Josh Allen, MVP, Josh Allen, elite. And then the the Rams just stormed back. It was like 28 to 12 and they came back, took a 32, 28 lead. And then Josh Allen leads them down the field. You could tell Josh Allen was losing his fucking composure. He had a pick, he had a fumble melted down like he did in that Texans game. And it's tough, man. Like I, I feel for the guy, but at the same time, like you got to start making fucking plays, dude. Like you want to be considered in that conversation with Deshaun and Mahomes and Blake Bortles and Lamar Jackson and Drew Locke and Tannehill, all the elite guys. You got to step up when it counts. Blaine Gabbert forgot about him. You got to step up when it counts with some of these guys. And so he did it. He got bailed out by that PI call on was it fourth down I think it was fourth and nine he got bailed out by a fucking PI call and so that was that they scored on the next play Bills stole the win from the Rams but the AFC East it's going to be between between fucking Josh Allen and uh, Cam Newton so I'm excited for that and then uh, let's get into this last segment here Oh, it's hot as shit in my apartment. Um, so this last segment I'm going to do, and I'm going to introduce this. I wanted to do this when Tim was on the podcast, but um, he just wasn't willing to do it because it was kind of a weird concept. But I think it'll almost work better with me doing it by myself. It's called Top 5, and it's just a segment where I pick different categories of stuff, and I rank the five best things in my own order. And this is my opinion you can fucking agree with it or not, take it or leave it. And so this week what I'm doing is the top the top five sports to watch. Not play, but watch. And so this is my five. You can take it or leave it. And so for me, number five, the fifth most fun for me is hockey. The NHL, once in a while I'll dive into some – Bruins hockey. My dad's from Boston, so he he loves the stuff. Uh, Zidane Yochara, that big motherfucker, will watch him try and just knock people over, and it's a good time. And I haven't really been watching the NHL playoffs this year, I'll admit, but it is what it is. Like, it's fun when the game is on. And if a hockey game is on and people are watching, then I'll tune in. Number four for me is baseball, the MLB. And I know people are going to be up in arms. Like, are you fucking kidding me? Like you'd sit through nine innings of some dude just throwing the ball down a plate. Uh, The answer is yes, Margaret. The answer is yes. It's going to be baseball for number four for me. I think that going to a game is incredible. You go watch a game, get a couple beers. If you're in LA here, you go to a Dodger game and just pay a light $16 for a Modelo and, enjoy yourself just a light 16 bucks for a 12 ounce beer and you have a good time you watch Kershaw blow it in the playoffs it's fun out here um but no I've got my socks hat on I'm pulling for the socks they're fucking terrible this year I realize it but growing up I would always be watching playoff baseball with my dad and that intensity you gotta love it you gotta be a fan of it so baseball's number four for me and then number three this isn't like specific sports. I kind of went with leagues in between this, like midway through. Number three for me is going to be college football. Now, college football, a little different from the pros in which not all these guys are going to be professionals. Not all these guys are going to be uh, fucking NFL guys. They have that NCAA commercial. 99% of people will have a job in something other than sports. And yeah, that's very evident. When you see a freaking Michigan punter 
getting tackled, trying to punt it randomly and losing the game for his team, that guy's not going to be a professional sportsman. We know that. When you see a 200-pound punter, you're like, yeah, this guy's benefiting from the meal plan, but he's not doing anything in the pros. College football is fun because you have a lot of busted plays. You'll have a lot of plays where in the Big 12 defenses, cornerbacks just decide to take a couple series off or maybe the whole game off and just kind of let things happen, let 600 passing yards just pile up on you. Um, And that can be fun to watch. The air raid we saw this past Saturday, Mike Leach, Mississippi State, they did the air raid on LSU and they broke it open. K.J. Costello had like 500 yards passing, maybe almost 600, Um, and it's fun shit. You love watching these defenses implode, and that's just what happens in college football. Like last year with LSU, we saw Joe Burrow do it, and it's just a ton of fun to watch. People are dominating. So that's it for number three. And then number two for me is the NFL. So it's still football is number two. I went with two and three as football. Shows you how smart I am. But number two for me is the NFL, and I switched this recently because growing up it was always college football for me was my favorite league, but I'm switching it because the NFL, I mean, there's just something about Sundays. There's something about just the professionalism where these guys come in, take care of business, and you just have to appreciate how damn athletic some of these guys are with like Julio Jones just making insane catches. Um even Odell Beckham, as much as he gets shit on publicly and in his private sexual life, he's a great player. And so you have to appreciate how good the pros are. Even the defensive backs, just how elite they are. The quarterbacks just have insane strength. You've got Josh Allen and Mahomes throwing it 80 yards. I'm, I'm sure Bortles can throw probably 90 So you just have all that strength there, which is so impressive for me. And then number one, my number one for the top five list, we're counting them. Number five, we had NHL. Number four, we had MLB. Three was college football. Two was NFL. Number one, you guessed it. It's the NBA. It's the National Basketball Association. And um, not much to say there. It's just so fast paced. You love watching the games, even the bubble. Adam Silver's made it work as ugly as a guy he is. He sure doesn't know how to make a league work. And so I credit him and I'm happy that, that they've been able to make it work. Um, and they've really just proved a lot. So yeah, it's impressive there. Um, and yeah, that's a, uh, that's kind of my take for the top five list. We've got NHL, MLB, college, NFL, and then NBA. And I think that'll do it for our bi-coastal episode four. Going to sign off here. And uh, thank you all for tuning in.